Hi everyone, this is Parnia Soleimani from HAP 823, Causal Analysis and Comparative Effectiveness, and today I will be giving a brief introduction to propensity scoring. So what exactly is propensity scoring? It's a balancing technique used with observational studies. These type of studies are non-randomized and may show great differences in characteristics between treatment and controls, which could create partial results. It's also used when there's no randomized design. Under non-randomized conditions, it can be used to produce equal comparisons. In randomized studies, we can increase the likelihood of examining the effects of a given endpoint without the influence of other factors. In addition, it's used to determine covariate effects. This can be used to examine the effects of covariates on a treatment in order to reduce the impact of these confounders. Essentially, propensity scores are used to estimate the effect of receiving treatment conditional on baseline characteristics. Here's an example of a case study in which propensity scoring would be useful. Let's say you have two hospitals that are comparing patient length of stay as a method of determining quality of care. Hospital B has had recent changes carried out in order to increase quality of care delivered to patients and will serve as a model to other hospitals should these changes be effective. When looking at the information, we see that Hospital A is observed as having a much lower length of stay per patient compared to Hospital B. Does that mean Hospital A does a better job at seeing and treating patients? The answer is not as clear as it seems. Although one would assume a lower average stay means the hospital is treating patients more effectively, there are other factors that will also need to be taken into consideration. To understand this better, we would have to examine patient characteristics. As you can see, Hospital B has a higher volume of elderly patients, which means these patients have a greater risk of having more complicated problems. This could potentially increase their length of stay at a hospital because they require more attention. Hospital B also has an occupational therapy unit. Patients in these units tend to stay for longer periods of time due to their conditions. These factors all have an influence on length of stay and need to be accounted for. In this case, propensity scoring allows us to conduct more balanced comparisons among hospitals by taking certain characteristics into account. Here is the model used to determine the estimated propensity score. It depicts the probability of receiving a treatment given the covariates. Let's take a look at the individual components in order to get a better understanding of what this model entails. The estimated propensity score is the conditional probability of being assigned to a treatment based on a set of characteristics, or covariates. Because we are dealing with probability, this score ranges anywhere from 0 to 1. The T in this model refers to the treatment type. We use t equals 1 for an outcome under treatment or exposure, and t equals 0 for an outcome without treatment or exposure. x denotes the observed characteristics which are referred to as covariates, and these are essentially the background characteristics affecting treatment. So we have x1 as the first covariate, x2 as the second, x3 as the third, and so on. Each covariate can be evaluated independently in the model to produce a propensity score associated with that covariate. There are different applications of propensity scoring, but for this video's purpose, we'll focus on some of the most commonly used. The first is propensity score matching, which is the most popular method used. In propensity score matching, you match subjects using a number, propensity score, between treated and control groups. Baseline covariates can be matched as long as they have the same or similar score. The goal is to make the baseline characteristics as balanced as possible between the two groups. In the figure to the right, you see various columns with values underneath. The P stands for patient and the T is for treatment. Every patient is assigned a 1 if they are in the treatment group or a 0 if they are in the control. Measurable variables are provided under age and condition. The propensity score, represented by the p-score column, was calculated for each row. Now that we have an idea of what was done, we can go ahead and start matching propensity scores between the treatment and control groups. As you can see, we can match the 0 0.3238 and 0 0.3257 since they're the nearest neighbors. 
Then we move on and match the next two and continue the process until our matching is complete. In this case, we have a leftover control which was not matched. Therefore, we can discard it from our study. This was an example of one type of matching. Other methods like stratification could be used to group individuals based on propensity scores. Statistical software packages such as R can conduct a variety of matching methods using add-ons like Matchit. Another application will be using regression analysis, which utilizes the propensity score for the covariates in order to provide adjustments. Logistic regression can be used to determine the odds ratio and can control for a number of covariates. The logit function calculates the odds ratio, which is adjusted for the covariates. Propensity score weighting is another popular application, which can be carried out using different methods. Popular methods consist of inverse probability, ATT, also known as weighting by odds, and weighting after matching. Each method consists of a different calculation used to attribute weights that are later used to estimate treatment effects. There are different toolkits, commands, and functions that can be used by various software, but for this video we'll focus on using R. When dealing with R, there are different toolkits for weighting and analyses that can be used. Matchit and Twang are heavily utilized for these types of analyses and can be installed using the commands provided under the Toolkits and Packages section. The Twang Toolkit contains functions used to estimate and evaluate propensity scores and associated weights. And just like it sounds, Matchit is used to select matched samples. The Regression function listed under the Matching section is an example taken from a dataset labeled alone. As you can see, you have the treatment, the different variables we are using, the data we are pulling from, and the method, which is nearest, as indicated using quotes. By using the summary function, R will produce a summary of balance for all data, a summary of balance for match data, and percent balance improvement. To find weights generated by propensity score matching for all the data in the dataset, we can use the m.data line listed under the weighting section followed by the fix function. This will produce a table with corresponding weights assigned. Here are some of the common treatment effect methods that are used with STATA. Additional methods and references can be found by visiting the STATA treatment effects reference manual, the website provided. In summary, propensity scores are used to estimate the effect of receiving treatment conditional on baseline characteristics. Different methods like propensity score matching, regression analysis, and propensity score weighting are common applications of propensity scoring. And statistical software like Stata and SAS can be used to conduct calculations associated with propensity scoring. I hope this video provided some insight on propensity scoring and the various methods associated with it. Please check out the references listed next for additional information, and thank you for watching.